But here we are at the side of Nauru's. So today we're at a place called the Side of Nauru's. It's uh, difficult to pronounce, huh? but uh, that's those R's in French. Um, it's what we call the Partage des Eaux. It's on the Canal du Midi, which uh, runs from Bordeaux to uh, the, the, from the Atlantic coast to the uh, Mediterranean coast. And here, just behind me, I'll just move around, you will see the monument to the founder of the Canal du Midi, the guy called Pierre-Paul Riquet. There you go, there it is there which uh, was built in the 17th century. Uh, now, just swinging round again, you can see a road down there, maybe if I just move it a little bit. This is the old Roman road, called the Via Aquitena, which took uh, salt from the Mediterranean as well as olive oil and wine and things, and it went all the way to Rome. And this was responsible for, uh, obviously, the Roman conquest of France, and also for bringing Christianity to this region, which is called the Lorage. Now, you may see there's a lot of wind today, which is very, very typical of the Lorage. Now, this is an absolutely beautiful region of uh, southwest France. Uh, it's very, very hilly. Uh, there's the Montagne Noire, which is over to the left, and on the right is a place called the, the Piège, uh, and then it goes on to the Pyrenees. Uh, but this region, as you may hear, is absolutely so windy. It's windy all the time. I lived here for eight years, and they say that you cannot get used to this region unless you're born here, which I can pretty much say that's, that's the truth. Now let's go and have a look at the side of Nauru's and the canal, and we'll be discovering a few things on the way. Right, so now we're going to take a walk down through that avenue of plane trees. I don't know if you can see it behind me. Uh, and we're going to go to the canal and we're going to find something which is pretty, uh, pretty unique and probably not a lot of people know about. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Canal du Midi, which stretches from Bordeaux in the north, right the way down to Set on the Mediterranean. And there it is. So I guess, I guess it's pretty quiet on a canal today. It's a Friday. It's very, very hot, 37, peaking at 38 degrees today. Uh, there's a wind and it makes it feel like you open opening a fan oven it's so hot there's a really really hot wind and uh, for those that don't cook it's a bit like a hairdryer um, you get the idea so uh, I think there's probably less people because it's a Friday although it's a holiday period um, there's normally quite a few boats going along here uh, people take quite a few boating holidays because it uh, or lots I've seen a few cyclists as well uh, some Dutch and some Germans and some Belgians um, it's very very popular with cyclists because in fact there's a path that runs all the way along right the way from the the Atlantic to the Mediterranean so it's really really nice and there are some nice shaded spots like this but there are however very very quite long distances where there's no absolutely no shade at all the trees are, are have been either knocked down or they've been diseased or whatever um, that is really really difficult in the summer so it's better if you're ever thinking of coming here uh, by bike I would say the best season is the autumn so September, October, even the beginning of November it can be really, really beautiful. And I mean, we, we, can, we can have days at, you know, 25, 30 degrees, whatever, but um, it's, it's very, very pleasant. Whereas now, to ride a bike in this heat is not very pleasant at all. Right, I don't know if you just noticed that sign, but on one it says Ecluse, which means a lock, and on the other it says Partage des Eaux. So this is where the water is separated. I'll explain. Let's go. So, this is it. 
this is what we call the Partage Zone. This is where the water, in fact this is the highest uh, point of the Canal du Midi, 190 meters, which is not mega high, but basically it, it helps the water to flow that way to the Atlantic and this way to the Mediterranean. And this is the Partage des Eaux. So let's go and have a look at the lock. We might even find a boat up there. So this is one of the many locks on the Canal du Midi. I'll put it up here how many there are, because I'll have to look this up on uh, Mr. Google. So they'll be up here, how many locks there are on the Canal du Midi. And here's two boats going for it. Shame we didn't get it when they just turned in, but there you go. Travel broadens your mind. It opens up your mind to various things, and we learn something new. And it's always full of surprises. I mean, we're in Southwest France. Did you imagine seeing a Statue of Liberty head here? Neither. And this, just behind me, if I can just get around to see it somehow, is where the water comes to feed the Canal du Midi from La Montagne Noire. From the Camas, it comes all the way down to here keep this canal at a constant level. Now this might look like just any old, you know, old French house in the middle of the countryside as it happens right next to the Canal du Midi, but this is the old house of the engineer of the Canal du Midi. Um, now, in, in, on the 18th of April, 1814, it was here that the armistice was signed between um, the Duke of Wellington and Maréchal Soult. Um, who was representing the, the French troops, which really signalled the end to the Napoleonic Wars. They'd been beaten in um, Spain, they'd also been beaten in Toulouse. Um, just shortly after this, Napoleon left Fontainebleau for Elba. So this is a really, really historic place. So just look at the place. I mean, you've probably never heard of this place before. You've probably never heard of when the uh, armistice was signed, nor where it was signed, nor between who. Everybody thinks that uh, the Napoleonic Wars ended at Waterloo, when in fact this was the beginning of the end. Now, it's now 39 degrees. I'm in a bit of shade, but I'm going to get out of this shade because I'm going to go to a bar. And then in the bar we can talk over a little drink, a nice cool badois or something like this, a refreshing uh, drink. Uh, we can talk about what I've been using, if you're interested, for this video. I'll catch you there. Go. Here we are. Uh, I'm just finished the, the video in the side of Rouge. I've just had to come home uh, for another drink and this is the national drink of France which is a pastis. Uh, cheers. Uh, now I'm just going to talk, talk you through the, some of the stuff that I used. Okay, it's not all necessary but um, for stills I use this. I use this all the time. It's a fabulous camera. It's a Leica Q2. Um, I didn't actually use any stills in this video but sometimes I do and I got a load of pictures while I was doing that, so I took the Leica Q2 with me. Now, for the head, the talking head video, that's of me, and also I kept it for quite a, quite a bit of the video, is I use this, which is a Sony ZV-1. It's a little tiny camera, which is great, because when you're taking a talking head, you can actually bring the screen backwards, and you can actually see here, if you are in shot. You'll notice that I wasn't in shot all the time, but that's because I'm pretty rubbish and this is the first time, this is the first time I've spoken on a video. I found this very, very good and this has got a little tiny tripod which I can just, you know, deploy, put it there. You've got little buttons on the front to do, do either a video 
a little buttons on the front to do either video or uh, stills and also telephoto. So that is a, a lovely little camera for blogging. However, the internal mic on this is, like most cameras, is not brilliant. So what I use is this big thing, which is a dead mouse. Um, no, it's not. It's a, it's a road mic, and that one goes onto the camera. It gives gives generally pretty good sound. But I noticed in because this is the first time, I, I was learning a lot myself, and I learned that when there was a lot of background noise, for example, when I was near the river, um, I couldn't actually hear what I was saying, and also the wind as well. So I'll be putting on next time this little lapel mic. For the other videos, I use this little thing here. This is called a DJI Osmo Pocket. Absolutely brilliant. Shoots in 4K. Very, very small. Um, the only thing I do with this, because one of my you know, strong points, one of my superpowers, if you like, is being able to lose these little tiny magnetic filters. And so I'd lost one. I went back two kilometers there twice looking for it. This is absolutely brilliant. It's a stabilized thing. This on the side is the controller wheel, which helps doing either horizontal or vertical panning. That is brilliant. It just fits in the pocket. It's fabulous. And for the drone shots on this one, I used this little thing. This is a DJI Mavic. You didn't see too many drone shots because uh, it was very windy. And this is only a little tiny thing. It's only 49 grams. I mean, you know, it's, it's as big as a mobile phone. But uh, once it's deployed the right way, uh, it's... A lovely little thing. Um, it would not have been good to even fly. I have a DJI Pro. I wouldn't have even flown a DJI Pro. But what I use this for, I use this for actually going down the alleyway of trees. So those are the things that I used. I had a good time doing it. I hope you had a good time watching this and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you've learned a little bit about the Loragi. We'll be doing more. And um, with my wife, who's the other frog, um, who will be, uh, she's actually behind the camera now at the moment. Um, she, she'll also be helping out on this and also starring in some of these. So, cheers.